how to turn a colour image into black and white in Affinity Photo. There's a variety of methods and here's some of them. So filters, colours and procedural texture. Bring up, I've got some presets, it's black and white. This is just R plus G plus B bracket divided by three. Well, this is a variation. This is 2.5 times R, etc. divided by five. And you can create a variety of different black and white effects by just varying that combination. So instead of 2.5, use 1.5. Long as they're equal in all of the equations, you will then end up with a grayscale image or black and white image. Again, 1.5 times there and you can see you get a variety of black and white effects very simple using this approach and click apply what you can also do you can use and of course you can apply it multiple times as well as well as all the other filters you've got colors and down here to monochrome dither now this one just creates a very basic dither effect but of course what you can do you can apply maybe some effects beforehand change things tweak things change the colors then apply the monochrome dither to create different black and whites if that's what you want. Another option, one probably I use more often than not, is this option. Just go up here to the tone mapping. So tone mapping, click there, goes into this tone mapping persona. Obviously initially it's color, but there's some options here. You've got this one, nighttime black and white. You've got a variety of different default, extreme and crazy, as well as other customs there. So a whole variety of different terms. And you can, of course, create your own as well, your own presets. So simply modify things, change things, and add a preset, black and white preset. But you can tweak design. Don't want to drag that away there. Just go through there, and you can just change the tone, local contrast, change exposure. A variety of different colors, and black and whites, I should say, changes there. Brightness, as well as contrast, saturation, and sun. Obviously, I don't want the saturation, that's the key thing. Make certain the saturation is down to zero. Otherwise, you end up obviously with color, which is maybe not what you want. And also vibrance, obviously, of no use whatsoever. But there's lots and lots of options here. White balance, shadow and highlights. You can tweak those to your heart's content to get a slightly different response each time. With And it depends on the image as well. You've also got this lovely curve as well. You can modify that, just tweak it very carefully and create different black and white effects that way. And again, at all points, you can always add it to your presets. So you can always come back to it and apply it maybe to a completely different image. Click apply. Also what you can do, you've also got an option with all these things, layer and fade tone map. Now in many cases, obviously, if it's just fading like that, you've got blend modes as well. You've got a variety of blend modes you can try. Some work well, some don't. So I'm just gonna keep that. Let's just do that one. What you've also got, you've got lots of other options such as go over here to document and convert format. Doesn't seem like it would do anything grayscale, but there is actually a grayscale option here. So simply just go to color format and just run through gray eight or gray 16. Just go for that. And once you've done that, convert. And it will turn it into a black and white image. Now, obviously you've got no manipulation. There's not, it's a pity that there is no feature for that, but you just get this nice black and white, which is reasonable. So I'm just gonna undo that, put it back to RGB. Probably another option, if you want more interactive ability to change the thing at a later point, what you can do, you've got layer. Layer and new adjustment layer, and you've got these ones. Now, not all of them are useful for black and white images. The most obvious one is black and white. So I'm just gonna go for that one, black and white. So select that, and you can then change the red, change the, and so on and so on. You just tweak it, obviously depends on the image itself. So if you've got a certain image, sometimes changing it one way, come back to it, apply it, will not be of any use. You need to tweak it for the image you've got. You go in there, you can just see it change there. Sometimes the result is not so great. And again, you've still got blend modes, and it's still edit support at a later time. Maybe you change your mind, but always go back, and double click there and just tweak it again. Also, you've got mask. You can always tweak the mask as well. So if you don't want it all to be particularly black and white, maybe some areas you want color, some areas black and white, you can tweak it using the mask. So that's one option. I'm just gonna remove the black and white now. And you can always obviously create multiple copies of those adjustments. Don't have to have just one, have three or four, 
and you can combine them, blend them in different ways. So layer and go down to new adjustment layer. And again, you've got curves. So that's another option. So curves, you've got here, RGB. Well, you don't have to use RGB. You can just go for gray. So gray, select that. And as you do that, the image turns to gray, strange enough. That's a bit of luck. <laughs> it would have been weird if it didn't. So if you go there, you can tweak the curve. And again, you've got a nice black and white image, which you can, of course, change and create a variety of different designs, black and white. However, I'm not going to go with that one, but I'll just point that one out. One that's probably more useful, I think, is a layer, new adjustment layer, and probably channel mixer. Pretty good one as well. But there's other ones, HSL, all of them. So channel mixer, got option here, RGB. This time, go for grey instead. Go up to grey, and you've got options here for intensity, so you can tweak that. Also, you've got alpha. Not always great if you go push like that, you end up with sort of, which is probably not what you want for your black and white image. And you can tweak various other things as well. You just try them. Just try the settings. You can change intensity, black and white, reduce it, increase it. A variety of different designs, and you've still got blend modes. Again, of course, most of the blend modes are not much use. But say you go for this one, lighter colour, whatever. Hue, and so on, so on. So you can run through those very quick and easy to change things using that. And again, what you can always do, you can always add multiple layers. It doesn't have to be just one layer. So I'll just remove those. Now, layer, and again, new adjustment layer, and you've got other options here. HSL, that's another option. So HSL, and again, down here, just turn around and say, well, saturation shift, just put that down. Very quick option as well. And again, you can change the luminosity. No point changing hue and shift. That's not going to change anything. But you can quickly run through their luminosity and just tweak that. And then once you're finished with that, close it. And again, you can always change it at a later point or delete it very quick and easy. Just remove that. And that's it. I think that's gone through everything. <laughs> I think I always have to quickly go and check. Otherwise, I think at the end of the video, I think, hmm, did I remember everything? Well, that's the things that I must admit I do when I'm trying to convert things to black and white. There's probably other ways of doing it, probably other filters and things you can do, other color effects you can combine. But that's certainly, a, I think, a fair number of ways of turning a color image into black and white in Affinity Photo. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. A dislike or like, always appreciated. Thank you much.